Hey, hey, everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Well, let's take a look at how national income is measured. And what you're going to see is that it doesn't really matter how you measure it. You're going to end up with the same answer. And that's a strange way of starting off a video. But I want you to think about measuring GDP, which is what we're talking about here, national income, as, as kind of like a carpenter who has like three different ways of measuring how long something is. Maybe one's a ruler, one's a yardstick, and one's a tape measure. In the end, it doesn't matter which measurement, which tool you use, yard, um, <laughs> ruler, yardstick, tape measure, in the end, you're gonna end up with the same answer, which is how long it is, you know, 30 inches long, or it's, you know, whatever, 50 centimeters long. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you get the right answer. So, here we go. First of all, the, the most commonly used measure of a country's national income is something called the Gross Domestic Product, or GDP. You may have heard of this before, but there are two main ways of thinking about Gross Domestic Product. The definition number one, Gross Domestic Product is the total value of all final goods and services produced in an economy in a given year. Okay, so you figure out the value of all of the goods and services. What's the value of a public school or a private school education? What's the value of a water bottle? What's the value of an iPad? What's the value of the key you just had made? A book, a table, um, a backpack, a chair, it doesn't matter. What's the value of it? And you add all that up and you end up with the gross domestic product. The other way of thinking about it is GDP may be defined as the total of all economic activity in a country regardless of who owns the productive assets. So what does that mean? It means that you take the total activity, economic activity in a particular country, and you add it up. And there's different ways of adding it up or measuring it, which is what this video is going to be about. But I want you to think about the word gross domestic product, okay? Gross just means total. So the total value of the product, so the total products made domestic in your house, okay? So it's super easy, really, gross domestic product, the total value of the products made in your particular house. And this house, and what's your house? Well, that means country, okay? So every country, I spelled it wrong, is gonna have its own domestic, gross domestic product. And it doesn't matter who owns, this is really important, who owns the productive assets. And what that means is that it doesn't matter who owns the company. So I live in Santiago, Chile, and Nike has an, a store here in a local mall. So whatever happens in that mall, whatever Nike sells happens in Chile, in the house of Chile, in the country of Chile. So those, that economic activity that happens at Nike is going to count towards the national income of Chile because it has to do with the gross, the value of the total products that the total economic activity in the house of Chile. Now that's different than gross national product, whereas Nike, since it's owned by the United States, though the value of that sales that would go on in the Nike store in Chile, if it were gross national product, would, represent, would be represented in the United States calculation. But because gross domestic product has to do with the places on a map and all economic activity that happens on a map, then the gross domestic product has to do with the total economic activity in each particular house or each particular country, regardless of, of who owns the company. So the sales of Nike here in Chile would count for the gross domestic product of Chile, even though it's a U.S. company. Now, there are three different ways of measuring GDP. One is called the output method. Okay? This means that you take the total output of the goods and services produced, and it's calculated by summing all of the value added by all of the firms in an economy. When we say value added, it means that at each stage of production process, we deduct the cost of inputs so as to not double count. And the data is usually grouped according to the different sectors of the economy, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Beautiful, what does that mean? It doesn't, what does that mean? What it means is, if the country, it means that you, if, if you were to think of all of the things that were produced in Chile and you were to hold them in your hand, right? So you're holding them in your hand and you got this armful of stuff and it was all made in Chile and it was all of the stuff that was made in Chile, goods and services, but just to make it little things, right? 
You're holding them in your hands. And then you go, oh, that was worth 100 pesos. 100. That was worth 1,000 pesos. That was worth 5,000 pesos. That was worth 10. That was worth 100,000. That was worth 15. And you add up the value of all those things, and you end up with a number. And that's going to be the gross domestic product. However, you have to be careful. Because let's say that one of the things in your hand at one point in the year was cotton, right? Cotton. And then the next point of the year, that cotton got turned into a shirt. Well, you can't count the value of the, when you count the value of the shirt, you have to deduct the value of the cotton because you've already counted the cotton. I don't know, make sure that's clear. Another maybe simpler way of saying it is, let's say that um, avocados are all over, made all over in Chile. And so the avocados are picked from the tree and they're sold at the market. Okay. Then those avocados are turned into guacamole. And that guacamole is resold. Okay, the value of the guacamole is the difference between the value of the sale of the guacamole minus the value of the avocado because the avocado was already counted in GDP before the guacamole was made. Okay, so that's the output method. If that sounds confusing, it is kind of confusing. It's not exactly the best way of doing it. In fact, the IB curriculum doesn't do it that way, but you need to know that it exists. The other way is the income method. And this is really simple. This measures the value of all the incomes earned in an economy. That's pretty straightforward. So instead of looking at the products that are sold and, the, and trying to figure out what that value is, why don't you add up how much money everybody makes in the country, firms, everybody? And then that will tell you, hey, that'll, that'll tell you the value of all the things sold. Because if all of the things here were sold that, were, that made the output, right, the guacamole, the palta, or the, the guacamole, the the avocado, the cotton, the shirt, you add up the incomes from each one of those sales, and hey, you have what should be the same number. So that's pretty straightforward, the income method. Okay, so you, you count up the value of the things. That's one method to, to calculate GDP. Another way is just to count up the money that was received for the sale of those things, and that would get you to be the same number. And then there's a third way. It's called the expenditure method. You count up how much money is spent. And this measures the value of all spending on goods and service in an economy in a particular period of time. And this is calculated by summing up the spending by all different sectors of the economy. Think about it. The output method, you get it. I, let's say that there's a water bottle. Let's say that in, in all three cases, the object's going to be a water bottle. You can, at the end of the year, say, hey, there's a water bottle, and that was made in Chile. Yeah, what's the value of it? Oh, the value of that is, you know, 5,000 pesos, which is roughly $10. Okay. Or you could, the water bottle, if say that was the only thing sold in the whole economy in Chile, you could look at the person who sold the water bottle, and you would look in their bank account, and they would have 5,000 pesos because they sold one water bottle. Or you could look at all of the money spent in Chile that particular year, and there's only one product, right? And it was purchased for 5,000 pesos, and you could count up that expenditure, and you'd end up with 5,000 pesos. So any way you add these things up, you should come up with the same number, just like the carpenter who has a ruler, a yardstick, and a measuring tape. They're going to end up measuring whatever it is, the table, and they're going to find out that the table you know, is whatever, 56 inches long. Does it matter if they use the ruler, the yardstick, which is three feet, or the measuring tape? No. And so it doesn't matter if you count up the value of the water bottle as 5,000 pesos, the income of the person who sold it as 5,000 pesos, or the, the expenditure, the, what some paid for it, you're going to end up with 5,000 5, pesos. Okay? So the expenditure method is the easiest, right? And you can, because you can break down the different segments of society. The first one is households. Spending by households is known as consumption. That's me and you going into a store and buying something. Bam. The other thing you can count up is the spending by firms. This is known as investment. These are things, I like to think of this as like, this is stuff that's so big that you have to borrow money from a bank. And firms borrow money from banks often. At our school, we just built this beautiful new theater. Guess what? Did, did, did our school pay for it in cash? No, they went, and bought, they went and borrowed the money from a bank, and then they built this beautiful building. So if you count up the amount of money that's invested through investment, you'll find out that firms 
you'll have the total expenditure of firms. Then you go and you calculate out, well, how much money did the government spend on everything? Paying the cops, paying teachers, paying the military, building roads, building bridges, um, um, paying civil servants, uh, paying electrical bills at all government buildings. That's all government spending. You add up the spending by government and you will, um, you will have a certain segment of society in terms of, you will, you will have all government spending. Okay? And then the last thing here is the spending by foreigners on exports minus the spending of foreigners on imports. And that's called net exports. Oh, what does that mean? Well, it's pretty simple, right? I live in Chile. Let's say I buy uh, a guitar from the United States and my money that I earned in Chile leaves Chile and goes to the United States. That is a export, right? Because I'm bringing something in, but the money's leaving. Right? That's import, sorry. Jeez, I said it backwards. The money's leaving, but the, there's something coming in. I'm buying a US-made guitar, an import. The opposite of that, of course, is if somebody is in the United States and they buy a backpack made by Doite, which is a very reputable Chilean brand of outdoor gear, and they, um, they send their dollars that are earned in the States and they come into Chile. Why? Because Chile exported something, but the money is coming in. So you take the, the difference between my spending and the spending on the backpack, my spending on the guitar from Chile, right, which is an import, and uh, and, and you subtract that from the money spent by foreigners buying Chilean goods, and you end up with X minus M, which is the balance of um, imports and exports. So all of that comes down to a really simple equation, and this is about as complicated as, as, as the equations get in SL economics, which is GDP equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. GDP in the expenditure method equals total spending by consumers, which is households, total spending by investment, which are firms, total spending by government, plus the difference between the exports and the imports. And what you end up with is the total value of all economic activity that's going on in a country. And this is the, ex the expenditure method is what is used in the IB curriculum. So in the end, while you know the output and the income method, you only need to remember the expenditure method. Isn't that cool? So in the end, it doesn't really matter how you add something up. Regardless of the method chosen, in theory, accounting will, all, will result in the same final figure, whether we call it national output, national income, or national expenditure. They all equal one another, and the IB uses the expenditure method. If you have studied aggregate demand, you will also know that while GDP equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M, if you think about this, and this is a little teaser for the future, if you think about this, these are consumers demanding things, firms demanding things, governments demanding things, and the difference between exports and import demand, and guess what you come up with? Wow, you come up with the total or aggregate demand in an economy. Ding, 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 ding. That is majorly huge connection. So aggregate demand equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M because that is the total value of all things spent in a, in a, in a particular country in a particular year. Well, that's the same thing as GDP is the gross domestic product the value of all economic activity if calculated through spending. There's a teaser, my friends. I hope you found this video to be helpful. We'll talk to you in a bit.